You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Whittier versus Reed. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Ms. Whittier, you say that you are sure Mr. Reed is the father of your 22-month-old son, Lucas. But the defendant's paternity doubts have led to constant fighting and tension in your relationship. You desperately hope to prove he is the father to save your family. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Reed, you believe it is medically impossible that you are Lucas's father. You say you bonded with him at birth and have taken care of him and loved him, but every time you look at Lucas, you are haunted by the doubts that you are not his biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Whittier, if Mr. Reed didn't have this doubt, where do you think the two of you would be right now? I think we would be married moving on with our lives, getting away from the conflict that constantly drags our family down. Really? And that conflict is all based upon a paternity issue? Yes, ma'am. Shortly before Lucas's birth, we had an argument. And that argument led to the ultimate gonna shut him up kind of moment. So I said, well, how do you know if it's even yours? You say that in the argument? Yes. I never doubted it was his. But I just kind of wanted to end the argument and let it be done. And I've regretted that statement ever since I made it. So talk to me about the nature of this relationship. How did your relationship begin? He um, tried to save my toddler that he thought was drowning. He didn't realize she could swim. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Good reflexes, Mr. Reed. <laughs> it was a baby and she was adorable, cute little stubby thing running around the pool in a little swimmer diaper. <laughs> Jumps in the pool, so I'm laying in the lawn chair, you know, getting my tan on. <laughs> and I'm laying in the lawn chair, and here she goes. I look up, she jumps in the pool, and I'm right behind her, and I come up looking for her, and she's swimming around. <laughs> That's so cute. She's adorable. I, I love that child also. <laughs> and so after that, you obviously introduced yourself to your <laughs> real-life superhero. Yes. Um, we had dinner later that night and didn't see each other for about a week. And finally, I decided, well, give him a call. You know, I, he was there for a reason and I couldn't get him off my mind. So I called and we spent quite a bit of time together for the next month. And then he left. He moved back to Tennessee. And it broke my heart and it broke my daughter's heart. It was instantaneous and I just didn't realize it at the time. And uh, he was gone for about six weeks. Okay. And then at about three o'clock one morning, I don't know if you want to call it a dream or a feeling, mm -hmm. but I got up and as I started down the hall, the family member that was staying with me kind of met me in the hallway and she said, it's time to go get Joe. And I'm like, I, I feel the same way, but what do I do? And so I checked Facebook and there's a message from him. Really? Come get me. It's time to come home. Oh, I feel like I'm in like a really cute romantic comedy right now, right? <laughs> this is awesome. I don't want it to turn bad. <laughs> and so you went to get him. We did. I was there before the sun come up. So you, you packed up and jumped in the car. Yeah, we jumped in the car and I headed to Georgia. And you headed to Georgia. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And so you all made a home there. We did. We did. And everything was going great in this relationship? He moved in in mid-September, and we found out we were pregnant the first week in November. I was <laughs> terrified. You I were? I mean, <laughs> outright terrified. Yeah, I... I didn't know what I was going to do. I mean, name me one parent that, that does know what they're doing, you know, first time. That's what I've... my mom said. Did you have any doubt during that time that the child was yours? No. No, not at, not at the time of the pregnancy. I didn't know. Okay. When did the plot twist come? <laughs> <laughs> with his ex-girlfriend. Okay. The conflict started between me and her. Well, then she starts whispering in his ear, oh, well, what if it's not yours? There was some arguments. There were some arguments? Yeah. Yes. And uh, an ex of mine decided to be disgusting and uh, send a very vulgar message to my phone. He found it and thought that maybe there was some continuing relationship there. Oh, okay. And then I moved in with my ex. 
Oh, and then you moved in with your yes. ex during yeah. the pregnancy? Yeah, he moved yes, in with Your the, Honor, I the did. Trouble I'm her. like, why do ke they keep trying to skip over the part I'm asking about? <laughs> now I know why, because this is where it I got messy. I really don't know. So, wait a minute. So, you're pregnant now. Your ex sends you a picture, a it text. It was a video. A video? Yeah. A vi yeah, I, I couldn't... Oh, man. I... What it, was in the was video, Mr. Like, Reed? He was having sex with somebody. What? Wow. Nah, right. It showed everything. <laughs> it did. Your ex sent a video of him having sex with somebody else. Yes, I think sure. he was trying to make me jealous and make me come back to him. I don't think... <laughs> I, I don't think it was gonna work. That was a pretty, he, that was a pretty horrible uh... concept. I mean, that's... I don't know what he was thinking, but... And so, wait, you see this video. Yes, I did. And then what do you think? Well, were you, why are you still having contact? What I goes mean, through your head? That, I, well, I told her, I was like, why, why are you... You know, I don't mind if you talk to him, but if he's gonna send you videos like this, I... No, I, t I told her, no, that's not okay. Okay, so, that's fair. I mean... Did you believe it was the ex and Ms. Whittier in the video? I think that's what he thought, and I, I tried... I didn't see who it was. I didn't see no faces or nothing. I oh. tried, tried and tried to tell him that's not me. I believe that it's a possibility that it could be her. I mean... And so. your point was, is why are you sending this video unless it's you and her? Yeah, why All would right. he do it? So, after you saw this video, you left? He moves in with his ex, mm. who proceeds to attempt to convince him that that child couldn't possibly be his. And, of course, because he's known her longer, he buys into this story. And it just got worse from there until I got sick. I had a, uh, a blood clot. And they put me in the hospital, put me on blood thinners. And they said the blood thinners carry a massive risk of neither one of you making it through. And I called him and I said, you need to come home. I'd never been so scared in my life. And I told him that I didn't know if Lucas was gonna make it. I didn't know if I was gonna make it. And so when you got that call, Mr. Reed, what did you do? All I could do, not to cry too, but I knew as a man that I needed to be strong and I needed to be her rock. He came home, we spent Yep. The next month in the hospital. They finally sent us home and said, as long as nothing else goes wrong from here to the end, maybe we'll have a healthy baby. So once you heard of this very scary medical situation, you went and stood by her and the baby, even with your doubts. Yes, he I was did. there for a lot of it, but then the same ex come back. Well, you know, look at your family. Your family doesn't have these health problems. They don't have these medical problems. And these are, you know, only inherited things. Well, that's not entirely true, you know. So, Mr. Reed, you were there uh, uh, on the day Lucas was born as well? Oh, yes. Oh, you cut were. The, I you cut was. the umbilical cord, Your Honor. You did. He cut I the held umbilical one cord and turned into up. a big My marshmallow. Had the other one and she pushed and the baby <laughs> come out. And buddy, and I instantly cried as soon as that He cried more trailed. than I did. <laughs> I lost it. I held him in my arms. That is, that is my world right there. That's my boy. I do anything for him. I just I need to know just so we can we can move on from this and we can grow from this and we can get stronger from this because I, I want it out of my household. It's a bad element. Are you on Lucas's birth certificate? No, ma'am. He's not. That lady came in there and said we cannot put a name on the birth certificate since she is still technically married and she is. Oh. oh. Yeah. We left that fact out. So, Mr. Reed was not able to put his name on the birth certificate because, by law, your husband is presumed to be yes, the father sir. of the child. A man I have yes, never laid eyes on. So, they put your husband's name on they Lucas's... They put unknown because I wouldn't give them my husband's name. Oh. I left my husband and haven't been in contact with him. But you're not legally divorced. No. So, Mr. Reed, at what point after the birth do the doubts really kick in? When Lucas started getting really sick. When he was two weeks old, he had his first grand mal seizure. Sometime during that three-week hospitalization, Joe's like, how does this happen? You know, nobody in my family has seizures. Nobody in my family has any of the feeding issues or... or the heart issues or the brain issues that Lucas does. I, and I, I tried like I telling said, him, you know, it, sometimes it can be so far back in your family you don't know it's there. Mm -hmm. 
So Lucas yes. was diagnosed with albinism. Yes. Uh, on its surface, when they first told me, I laughed because I didn't realize how serious it was. We all hear the word albino. Nobody actually thinks about what it means. And suddenly you realize it doesn't just mean that he's pale and blonde and blue-eyed. It means that his skin can't take sunlight. The only huge doubt I had is, is the means, albino. That was a physical um, proof. And that, that's what's... It means bleeding on his brain. His body's just not equipped to handle anything. He, he can't go outside. He can't Don't take play. bright lights. No. Um, no flickering lights. They're, they're saying his eye movements um, are, are partially from a, a bleed on his brain. Okay. And we don't know if that bleed is because of the blood thinners or is it part of his albinism? Mm -hmm. And that albinism is still giving me doubts. I mean... But he keeps wondering, you know, if he's this sick and if he's got all of these problems, how can he be mine? My family's healthy. So, Mr. Reed, okay. you submitted a graph to the court and you're saying on your side of the family... Your grandmother, uh, grandfather, on both sides, maternal and paternal. No, I had... Your I, mother and father. I, yeah, none of... No, nobody has albinism. I've never heard of anybody in my... No one. Them. Nobody. And I, then, Miss Whittier, on your side of the family. There's no one with an actual diagnosis, um, but there's several people who show similar symptoms. <laughs> Do any of your exes have this albinism gene? Medically, I have no idea. Um, potentially, yes. The one that he's had issues wondering about um, is actually blonde and blue-eyed, too. So, listen, I've heard the testimony, and, uh, and this court wants to understand albinism better. Jerome, will you please escort Ms. Ray Lawry into the courtroom? Uh, Ms. Lawry is the president and co-founder of the Albinism Alliance Group. I'm going to have you go up to the witness stand right next to the judge. Watch your step going up the steps there. Ms. Lawry, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We are here today discussing the paternity of beautiful baby Lucas. And this court wants to understand, is albinism passed genetically... Uh, albinism is passed genetically um, from the parents to the child, but depending on which gene is affected, depends on whether both parents or one parent passes it. Oh. Normally, the albinism trait or is recessive, and when it meets a copy of itself, meaning both parents having the albinism, the same gene affected, then it becomes dominant. Can you have albinism and not know it at all? Yes, everybody can carry the albinism trait, but usually you only find out when the baby gets here. Mm. You can have two persons that have albinism and their children do not have albinism. Really? You have two people who do not have albinism and all of their children have albinism. Because it's all about the gene combination. Exactly. So with that said, Mr. Reed, after you've heard the testimony from our expert, does that change? your doubt or affect your belief in any way? It doesn't... I'm not gonna lie to you. It doesn't help the doubt. We're, we're in court. I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't help the doubt. And that's what I want you to be as honest. Of course. I'm always... So you, feel, you still feel doubtful. Even with the information, you still have doubt. It, saying it come from both parents, I mean, to me, I don't know about anybody else, but to me, that's absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, I don't... I just don't know what to think. Because you really want Lucas to be if your son. If that makes son. any sense. But the thought that he's not mine it would destroy me. If you were to read the DNA test results and you tell me that he's not the father, you're going you're to watch me cry. Why do you have tears in your eyes, Miss Whitty? Because it takes a lot for a person to love a child that way. To know he loves that kid the way I do, no matter what. Let's get the results. Jerome? These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Whittier versus Reed, when it comes to 22-month-old Lucas Whittier, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Reed, you 
are the father. I can see how relieved you are. I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm shaking, man. This is the happiest day of my life. Aside from him being born, this is the happiest day of my life. I will be a father to him if it kills me, until it does, until I finally get old and wear out, and then I'm griping to him about the TV remote or something, you know, because he's wheeling me around in my wheelchair or something. <laughs> Well, listen, I said to myself, you've got this amazing young man and beautiful young woman, and they've got this child who needs both parents, who needs the love and the support of two people who love him unconditionally. I just wanted to be able to deliver that result to you, and I did not know what it was, but I am so very happy for you both. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want you all to move forward. I want you all to leave the past in the past. We have counseling and resources for you because this is what's going to best serve Lucas in the long run is for you all to stay together, for your family unit to be together, and for him to have the love and support along his journey. So I wish you all the very, very best. Court is adjourned. Thank you so much.